All right, in this video, we're going to be looking at equating equations. A little bit of a mouthful, but basically, let's look at these two, these two equations. So if you're given two equations um, and you have two unknowns, what do you start doing? Well, in this case, we have an x that we uh, don't know in both equations, and we have a y we don't know and it's also in both equations. So any one of the two equations, we can't solve for either x or y because you don't actually know the other one. <clears throat> so the binomial um, method won't work in this case, but some of the st same skills do apply. So if you don't understand some of the skills, maybe you look at, take a look at the binomial or double binomial videos. So here, um, Let's look at uh, the. Let's look at this first equation, and let's start with that. And I'll explain what to do as we go along. Three y equals four x plus seven. So what we're going to do is we're going to pretend that x is a constant in this case, and we're going to solve for y for now. Okay. In this case, it's pretty easy, right? Let's just simply, if we divide by 3 on both sides, then this 3 and this 3 cancel. Okay? So writing that out again, we have y equals 4x plus, three, uh, plus 7 over a total 3. Okay? So y equals all of that. Now that we have it in this form, we can start doing some equating. Okay, so first you have to manipulate one of your two equations to solve for only one of the two variables. Now you look at the other equation. Let's, let's do the other equation in red. So this equation here is gonna, we're gonna start here. So this is 3x minus 2y equals 4. So now there's two ways of doing this. And my preferred method would be to solve for y here, to solve for this y. But um, another method could be that you take just this whole value and you substitute it in for y and solve for x. So let's try both of those. We'll do um, my preferred method in green underneath, and we'll try the other one in a second in blue. So in green here, this is my preferred method. I'm going to try to solve for y. So we want to get y on one side. This is basically just a binomial type of question. So we have, um, currently we have a negative 2y, so let's add plus 2y here, plus 2y, okay, now we know this one cancels with this one, so let's write this out again, 3x equals 4 plus 2y, now this 4 is in the way, so let's try to get rid of that by subtracting 4 on both sides. Okay, so positive 4 and the negative 4 cancel. 2y is left over. We have 3x minus 4. Okay, um, we're not quite done yet. We're really close. Here's a 2 left over. I'm going to try to get rid of that. 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. This 2 and this 2 cancel. And now we have y left over on this side. And again, like in my double binomial expression, we like to have the uh, variable on the left side. It's just convention to do it that way. So y equals 3x minus 4 over 2. So now my, this is my preferred method. So looking at this new number here, or this new value. Now we'd take 
in my preferred method, now we take this and we bring it down. So this old equation, and we go equals 4x plus 7 over 3. So actually let me draw that arrow in a better spot. This is the same equation. Okay? But that only works because y is here. And so and this is the same as this. So if y equals something and y equals something else and we know that y equals y then we can equate both things that y equals. So in this case, so if you said y equals 1 over there, and you said over on this side, y equals 2 minus 1, well, you could say 1 equals 2 minus 1. And it turns out, yes, that's true. So if you say y equals something, then y equals y every time, okay? So in this case, we bring it down and we can make them equal. And now we can solve, just like a binomial expression, we can solve for x. Right? From this step, we can solve for x. Because it's only one variable. Look at the double binomial video if you don't understand how to get there from here. But I'm going to leave that for now. And let's take a look at this other way of doing it. So, um, I'm going to write our equation here, 3x plus, um, sorry, minus, minus 2y equals 4. So that's the same as our red. And I'm going to write this new way of doing it in blue. This is not what I prefer, but some people like it better this way. So we know that y equals 4x plus 7 over 3. So if that's true, then we can substitute that in instead of this y. So what we could do is we can write 3x minus 2 multiplied by the whole expression in this big square. I'll do that somehow. By the whole expression in the square. Equals 4. Do you see how that works? So all I did was instead of writing y here, right beside the 2, I wrote this entire expression because this entire expression is equal to y. Okay, so now we have, again, a double binomial. You have two variables, or two x's in here, but it's only one variable. It's only one x. So you could start multiplying this out, and we'll try doing that for now. 3x minus 2. Um, that 2, I'm going to multiply that into the brackets. So actually, instead of writing 2, I'm going to write 8x plus 14 over 3 equals 4. Okay, now... Uh, I'm going to try to break up these two terms. 3x minus 8x over 3 plus 14 over 3. So I didn't actually do anything. Oh, actually this plus needs to be a negative. Didn't actually do anything there. I'm just fiddling with the equation till I get x on one side. Um, now I'm going to add to both sides, plus 14 over 3, plus 14 over 3. Whenever I do something to one side, I have to do it to the other. 4 plus 14 over 3, and obviously we know that this one cancels with this one. So we've got, now we've got, 3x minus 8x over 3. <coughs> and um, if we make the common denominator of 
3, then we can write this as 9x over 3 minus 8x over 3 equals 4. Um, well, we'll make this common denominator as well, which is 12 over 3 plus 14 over 3. <coughs> Um, there's a common denominator of 3 all the way through, so I'm just going to multiply the whole thing. Multiply by 3. The whole darn thing, okay? That's just to cancel out all the 3's underneath here. <coughs> now, we simply have 9x minus 8x equals... 12 plus 14. 9 minus 8 is what? 1. X. 12 plus 14 is 26. And X equals 26. Beautiful. Now let's try to see if we can solve it in this equation. So we've got 2 on one side and 3 on the other. How about we multiply the whole thing by 2 and multiply the whole thing by 3. <coughs> the 3 cancels with this 3, but still exists over here. The 2 cancels with this 2, but still exists over here. And I'm going to write it out again. 3 bracket 3x minus 4, 2 four bracket 4x plus 7. <coughs> Multiplying the 3 into the brackets here, we've got 9x minus 12. Multiplying the 2 into the brackets, we have 8x plus 14. And we want to have x on one side. Again, this is similar to our uh, double binomial question. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract both sides like this. Cancel with that. And I'm going to do, I'm just going to do two steps in one because you can take a look at my other video if you don't understand. Plus 12. And if we do it to one side, we have to do it to the other side. Missed that. There you go. And now, whatever is not cancelled out, let's try writing those down. So we've got 9x minus 8x, right here and here. It's not cancelled on this side is 14 plus 12. That's not cancelled either. So on this side we have 26. On this side we have 1x. Oh, look, we have the same answer. Two different methods and yet the same answer. So equating equations is really important because no matter how you do it, whether you're solving um, for the for like solving for y, which is my preferred method, or you so solving for y like this is my preferred method, or if you'd rather just plug it in right away, so plug it in sort of like I did over here, you can do that. And this happens a lot in physics. So, for example, in physics, we have Fg that often gets plugged into our Fnet equation. So if you want to take a look at an example of that, take a look at the other video. Please, if you don't understand any of this stuff, um, if you don't understand some of these steps, take a look at the double binomial video. They break down uh, how to do double binomials a lot more in depth.